begin. Uh, my name is Javier Becerra. I'm the chairman of the House Democratic Caucus, joined by our vice chairman, Joe Crowley, and the ranking Democrat on the Rules Committee, Louise Slaughter from New York. We're thankful that she's here with us. She has been one of those individuals who, in Congress, has been trying to bring some sanity back to this House of Representatives so we can focus on the things that are priorities for the American public rather than these distractions and this uh, seeming contempt for the American people when it comes to getting things done that count here in Washington, D.C. and in the House of Representatives. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what specifically I'm referencing in just a moment. I simply want to start by saying that uh, we had a good meeting. Members are ready for this week. We are thrilled to hear the news that uh, there may be a, a good compromise that has been worked out between the House and the Senate, Republicans and Democrats, to move forward to fix the VA system, the Veterans Administration system, which was clearly proven to be broken. Uh, we owe it to our veterans, and it looks like there's a package that should be able to get bipartisan support. There are issues, of course, as any compromise legislation would have, but at least it appears uh, like a bill that can move things forward that many members, including uh, this member, uh, could support. We also heard discussion of some of the issues coming up with the humanitarian crisis on our border, and it appears that right now our Republican colleagues are trying to figure out what to do even at this late stage, uh, and it's unclear if they will have the votes to put anything on the floor that not only we could support as Democrats, but as Republicans. Uh, it's not clear that re the Republican proposal could even get Republican support, which again shows how quickly the House of Representatives has descended to this politics of shut down, do nothing, and the mentality that the priorities of the American people can wait. And that's unfortunate. Because what we find now is that Republicans this week will have us not solve the humanitarian crisis on the border, not deal with raising the minimum wage, not deal with providing a woman who does equal work to a man equal pay, not move to try to help those Americans who've lost their job through no fault of their own by providing them with their emergency unemployment insurance, uh, not move forward in a long-term way with solving the crisis we face with our roads and bridges and transit and highways to get them repaired or, or built, uh, but with a lawsuit, an unprecedented lawsuit that has never seen the light of day in the history of this country where the House of Representatives will use taxpayer money to sue the president for something they say they didn't want him to do. It is, uh, it is crazy, but that's where we are in this Republican world of shut down, do nothing politics, where uh, they are now preparing to sue him in this wide open, expansive bill to give them authority to use taxpayer dollars to sue the president on something that even Republican scholars constitutional scholars say will not succeed. We would prefer to focus on things that count. Rather than spend millions of dollars from the taxpayers to sue the president, we would rather see this Congress enact an increase in the minimum wage. Rather than see the Republicans move forward with an investigation at taxpayer expense costing millions of dollars to reinvestigate for about the seventh time the sad incident in Benghazi where four Americans died, we would rather see this Congress focus on giving women all their rights, whether at the workplace or with their health care decisions, instead of restricting their rights. We would rather see this Congress move the President's job agenda so we can add to all the jobs that have been created over the last several months. Close to 300,000 jobs last month alone created in this country. The President working with the private sector, getting America working. But when you have this drag on the economy, and the drag on progress that we see in the House of Representatives because of the shutdown, do nothing politics, it makes it really tough. And so we're ready to go into August, go home, do our work, meet with our constituents, and let them know that Democrats are prepared to move an agenda. In fact, if we had control of the House of Representatives, in 100 days, we have said, come next year, as a majority in the House, we would move legislation to increase the minimum wage, to give women equal pay for equal work to make sure that those Americans who lost their job through no fault of their own have an opportunity to have their emergency unemployment insurance so they can continue to look for work and get reemployed, to make sure we pass a transit bill that lets us 
put money back into our communities by building those roads, highways, bridges, and transit. And we would make sure that we do this while putting the middle class first, not ignoring the middle class, not showing contempt to the middle class by using their money, taxpayer money, to sue the President of the United States. With that, let me now yield to my vice, uh, the Vice Chairman of the Democratic Caucus, Joe Crowley. Thank you uh, to the Chairman, uh, and thank you for Louis Slaughter joining us this morning as well to talk about the lawsuit, the unprecedented lawsuit, as was described by uh, Chairman Becerra. But let me first uh, talk about um, the fact that many of us in our caucus would rather stay here in Washington and work on the issues that Chairman Becerra talked about, comprehensive immigration reform, a jobs bill that would put Americans back to work and really help uh, the middle class in this country. Uh, there are so many issues that need to be addressed, uh, and yet uh, Speaker Boehner and the Republicans uh, want to get out of Washington as soon as possible. Uh, but we're going to take advantage of that time as well uh, to help jumpstart the middle class. And that is taking our message of what we would do when we take back the House of Representatives in the first 100 days. And that's about making it in America and our, our efforts to, to focus on job creation and growth here in the United States so that people can make it in America and we can actually make things again here in the United States. Uh, also about uh, our agenda uh, to make uh, education a priority that works for all Americans, but particularly the middle class. Affordable uh, uh, pre-K education as well as affordable college education. And, and lastly, uh, that we start to address the inequities in our system as it pertains uh, to women in our country. Uh, equal pay for equal work, uh, amongst a myriad of other issues that we will put forward uh, so that when, uh, when women succeed, America succeeds. Uh, that will be our focus uh, every day that, well, when we're in, uh, in our districts uh, during the month uh, of August and prepare to come back here in September to, to, the, to do the people's business. Um, just one brief uh, remark about um, all of this is while we are uh, sending it forth a message of what Democrats will do to help move our country forward. As the Chairman said, uh, the Republicans have been focused on dithering on a lawsuit. Uh, a lawsuit that we think lacks substance, uh, but not one that can be ignored because we think the ultimate goal is much more nefarious. Uh, and that is uh, because of, uh, particularly because I think of the far right uh, wanting to see further action taken against our President. Uh, we are not going to stand for that. Uh, we will do everything we can uh, to see that the American people understand just what this is all about and to help us in that effort. We have uh, the ranking member of the Rules Committee and my good friend from my home state of New York, Louise Slaughter. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Javier, and I'm glad to be here this morning. Uh, we have to suspend belief, I think, to watch the Congress of the United States. First, we had not a single Republican vote on trying to give health care to the American people and to bring this country into the 21st century. We were the last industrial country on earth that does not provide health care for its people. Not a single vote for them. Fifty votes since it passed to kill it. With a shutdown of the government, uh, orchestrated, we are told, by Senator Ted Cruz, that took $24 billion out of this economy. And then all the votes that we've had, the estimate on the, on the floor and committee time are extraordinary. I have been told it cost as much as $79 million for all of the votes simply to kill Medicare, the uh, health care bill, ACA. So then we suddenly turn around and decide uh, that we, they want us now to believe that they have some grounds, after all those attempts to kill this measure, that they have some grounds to sue the President of the United States because he delayed one portion of it at the request of people who were involved in it, who were working with him to make it work. That is the craziest thing. It doesn't make any sense. And frankly, if people really stop to think about it, I think it makes us a laughing stock. Boehner v. Obama is the really low point here. Never before, have you heard already, has one House of the Congress decided to sue the President of the United States. There are several factors here that really bear mentioning. First is that a senator in Wisconsin last week, Senator Johnson, sued in federal court because he did not believe that the ACA should cover members of Congress and our staffs. That judge in charge that threw that out again because of no standing. We have no standing either. But what we do see happening here, 
could be a serious erosion of the powers given to the House of, of the Representatives by the Constitution to address the redresses, the problems that we think that we're having with the executive. We have the power of the purse. Senate has the power of confirmation. Other things that we do, but we have judges like Scalia, judges like Rehnquist, judges like Roberts, other prominent Republican scholars, constitutional experts saying this will not work. To take our business, what we are supposed to be doing, and ask the court to make that decision for us, it's only another delaying tactic, but this one is deadly serious. And we understand the politics of it. We believe this is purely a political stunt because so many of their members are desperate, including some of the outside groups uh, that constitute their base, the Republicans desperately want to do impeachment. But they went through that once before with Bill Clinton, a fairly recent memory, and saw what came of that. So they're going to take this step first, but I am not in any uh, way assuaged from the notion that the impeachment is not the final goal here. Remember that the night that President Obama was first inaugurated for the first term, it was determined by important people in the Republican Party that they would see to it that he got nothing done. Well, he's gotten plenty done. The economy is growing, unemployment is dropping, health care costs are dropping. Uh, we are, for the first time in a long time, we feel like this economy is getting on pretty good footing. This economy would be roaring by now if they had been able to once every now and then think about the government instead of their own parochial interests. Bills that we wanted to pass have languished going absolutely nowhere. And this again today, when we go to rules today, will be, as I said, a closed rule adding to the most closed rules in the history of the Congress. We will have no debate, no chance to amend anything. We will ask for amendments in the Rules Committee, but they will all be turned down. All those amendments that we ask were to try to restrain the cost of this lawsuit. In fact, we even had an amendment to say that the cost of this lawsuit should be paid for out of the money, the $3.2 million that they've already decided to spend on yet another Benghazi investigation. Now, that, add that to the waste that's going on here. And if Americans aren't outraged about what they're doing, it is not what Congress is doing. It's what the majority party is doing. The rest of us are out yelling, screaming, trying in rage to try to get something done in this Congress. The, co the country really cries out for it. No wonder the president's had to use executive action. If he had not, we would almost be down to zero here, except an awful lot of expensive votes that get us nowhere. So once again, we will go through the, the charade of pretending we're trying to do some legislation. But with, with if, if, if history is any evidence at all, this will not go very far. But it is a dangerous, dangerous precedent. And believe me that, as I said before, I have no reason to believe that impeachment is not the goal. Thank you. Take any questions. First, uh, I think the uh, President made clear that he supports the Senate's uh, proposal for emergency supplemental funding and assistance to try to deal with the humanitarian crisis at the border. Uh, and so now we have uh, a united effort on the part of the President with Democrats in the House and the Senate to try to move something forward to address this so that the Border Patrol, so that Health and Human Services, all of our agencies can tackle this issue as rapidly as possible but as humanely as possible to deal with the, the children who come to our border. Um, in terms of what the President might do, well, uh, as Luis so eloquently put it and as the Vice Chairman made clear, it, this place isn't doing much of anything, which is making it very difficult for the President, whether it's dealing with that border crisis or dealing with further job creation. And so the President is trying to do what he can within the confines of the law with his executive authority. My sense is the President will try to do what he can to make this broken immigration system with these broken laws work as best it, it can, the system can, which probably means focusing on 
those individuals who are in the country who we really want to make sure are out and out soon. Criminals, drug smugglers, uh, the human traffickers, the people that I think every American would say, absolutely, direct your resources to go after those bad elements. And so I think the President is going to do what he can, limited as it may be, to try to uh, do what the Republicans in the Congress have been unwilling to do, and that is to let us try to move forward with the broken immigration system. We shouldn't be talking about this. More than a year ago, the Senate passed a bipartisan bill which would have started tackling all these issues, including the humanitarian crisis at the border. But Republicans have shut down a vote on immigration reform, and that's why we see ourselves where we are. We can't resolve this because the House of, Rep Rep House of Representatives, uh, Republican leadership, is playing this game of shut down, do nothing politics, and it's really hurting the ability of America and its economy to move forward. Did they indicate any timeline on the resolution? I'm sorry? Any well, I think the President is going to try to move as quickly as he can. He's, uh, what, he has, what he said to a number of us who were visiting with him and then with uh, Secretary Johnson of Homeland Security is that they're just trying to assess everything that's possible. Remember, the President held off on doing something in the hopes that Republicans in the House would try to move uh, a fix, a legislative fix, forward. And it wasn't until a little bit more than a week ago that, once again, Speaker Boehner uh, and his Republican colleagues made it clear that they've decided not to do anything. They're going to shut down any attempt to have votes. And so I think now the President, some point this summer, I think will be ready to, to take some action. Can I just make a quick comment, though, in terms an observation, uh, maybe? Uh, the President offers a number that he thinks we need in the supplemental to address the emergent issues before us. Our Democratic colleagues in the Senate uh, had a different number. And that's quite to be expected, I think, both the House and the Senate, in terms of what that ultimate number would be. It's a, it's a fairly different number, over a billion dollars in difference. Um, I think our Senate colleagues and the Democratic colleagues understand in order to pass something in the Senate, they need to work with their Republican colleagues to get that through in some way or another. You see a completely different approach here in the House of Representatives. Uh, a document, although we don't know all the details of it yet, we're waiting to see what the Republican proposal will be, but already it's taking on so many political elements to it. Not that politics is void in anything we do, uh, but that the, the, the document itself is substantially, even much further, less than what the Senate is proposing. Uh, and we believe, we expect to see some, uh, some writers in this bill uh, that uh, are, are an attempt to dis discourage any Democratic participation uh, almost in, in the passage of this bill. And I think that's the real difference here in terms of the approach uh, that I think the American people are tired of, seeing the Republican majority in the House of Representatives uh, not even address emergent issues, thwarted at every step of the way for, 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 for solely for political gain. Any other questions? You know, you know, what the House sent to the Senate was this patch. If you know construction, I used to be a laborer in construction, uh, working for some time with a construction firm, and my father is a retired member uh, of, of the laborers' union working in construction for over three, close to four decades. Um, you don't do a project in six, eight months. You don't do a project for a few million dollars. A highway, uh, a subway system, a bridge, you're talking billions of dollars. I think it costs, at least in California, somewhere about two or three hundred million dollars a mile to, to do a highway. And so when you do an eight month patch, that's 10, 15 billion dollars for the entire nation, you're not serious. And so the Senate wanted to do something long term. House Democrats wanted to do something long term. House Republicans couldn't get their act in order, but the last thing they wanted was to shut down something else, in this case the Highway Trust Fund, which would shut down all projects throughout America and put a whole bunch of Americans out of work in the construction industry. Construction is one of the hardest hit industries when it came to this uh, Wall Street uh, debacle in 2008, which caused this recession. The last thing we needed to do is make it worse. So they patched passed this patched bill. Senate's trying to make it better. Um, you know, th that's this game that's played. 
We may not even get that transportation bill out. Uh, that's what happens when you're, you're in this mode of suing the president instead of getting the real work of the American people done, of keeping Americans working and fixing our roads, our bridges, our highways, doing the infrastructure work that makes this country great. So uh, it's unclear what's going to happen. As the Vice Chairman pointed out, we still haven't even seen uh, in the House this uh, legislation they uh, plan to put on the floor, Republicans plan to put on the floor, to deal with the humanitarian crisis at the border at this stage. And so that's the, the breakdown you see here is that House Republicans have decided not really to lead, but to play politics, sue the president instead of getting the real work done. Any other questions? Why don't you start us off there? You know, I, I don't see how you seriously can ask me that question. Uh, you've heard all their base and everybody yelling about it, and you've certainly seen the quotes uh, by, by members of the House that impeachment is the thing they want to do. Uh, and for him to, to say that, I think, is uh, disingenuous. I also think you'd have to look at the skittish nature of their response to this as well, how nervous they get when that word comes up. But what is the ultimate goal here? I mean, in, in fact, uh, some of the what has been postponed will be going forward. Uh, that would render this, maybe this whole lawsuit moot. Uh, uh, so I think you have to really ask uh, Mr. Boehner, what's the ultimate goal here in the end? Uh, and the broad nature of this, the broadening out of this, uh, the nature of the suit itself, I think is an indication that this is really a net that they're tossing out there to see what they can catch in it. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. Let me add one on. thing here, too, and, and that is, what, what is it that Speaker Boehner uh, plans to do here? Since everybody advising him, and th with, who are constitutional scholars, said don't do this thing, I, I think a reasonable person might assume that to calm down a lot of the people who are calling for impeachment, that they would decide this lawsuit, maybe, maybe that would do. Uh, but I'd like to know from him, I've not heard from him, why he thinks this lawsuit is a good idea. And, and I certainly would, spend the money that we're going to be spending. I would simply... Uh, mentioned that uh, Speaker Boehner doesn't always have control of his own Republican conference. He's not been able to get his members to do what he says he wants to do. In fact, more often than not, they push him to do something that he said he won't do. Uh, you need only go to the third ranking Republican in the House of Representatives who would not answer uh, the question about whether impeachment was coming up uh, to know that there's probably percolating in the Republican conference this notion that lawsuit's not enough. We've got to get rid of this guy. It's impeachment time. And so you talk to enough Republicans, you hear that talk. Democrats didn't talk, start to talk about impeachment. It was Republicans who openly, publicly started talking about impeaching the president. For what, it's unclear. They just don't like him. And it's clear that they're impacting the U.S. economy, American families, by not letting us get our work done. If, if this lawsuit didn't have such serious consequences for the country, some people could laugh it off. But the thing is, it's serious because it's dangerous. It's dangerous because it's reckless. And clearly, some of us have heard Republicans talk about this reckless road to impeachment. And so you got to take it serious, even though it's never been done before, and you wonder what they're thinking. But if they're not going to do the work of the American people, then we got to fight to make sure that they don't undermine what this democracy has been about. Louise, did you want to say something? No, thanks.